Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labakan with the Rocks and Stocks News Show, and we've got another in our interviews of executives of junior mining companies that are making big news. And my man, Tim Froud from uh, Sokomen, has been busy this week. Uh, we had There was three news releases out that we have to talk about today. So, Tim, uh, thanks a lot for joining me. Uh, no problem, Alan. Uh, yeah, well, we had a lot of business to 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 get out to the market. Uh, it's been a very busy fall, uh, busy year in total, but especially this fall with, uh, uh, you know, Kraken just, just taking off now, um, golden hope, I guess. But uh, uh, yeah, it's been a busy week, although it, it seems like it's only a week. But uh, it, like I said, this is the culmination of the past several months of, uh, of very hard work. And I must uh, congratulate my team for making all this possible. And obviously, you know, the market seems to be liking a little bit, at least the start of the day or, yeah. or, or for, uh, <clears throat> for our efforts this week. But uh, Well, it kind of yeah. helps also, Tim, that you put it out on a good day for the price of gold, which can often be a sentiment guide for uh, junior mining. And um, uh, that was on the news that, well, the information that the Fed looks like they're getting close to, ending their uh, battle with uh, inflation by raising interest rates. And, uh, you know, it uh, gold's up about 40 or 50 bucks last I looked. So we got a good day. You put out a good, new, good news on a good day, Tim. Well, yeah. And even though it is news on another metal, uh, I, I want people to remember that Salkman is still, you know, uh, first and foremost, a gold company. Right. Um, don't forget this uh, this this blessing of lithium and now cesium and other metals um, came along as a gift basically on one of our gold properties. So you know it's it's our duty you know to flesh this thing out as best we can. And you know we we've talked about you know down the road. To, I I kind of thought maybe sooner than later because you never know with these trends, these markets. But uh, clearly you know all, you know the past year has shown that. Uh, uh, the lithium space in particular, and, and certainly in, in, you know, related critical metals are, uh, <clears throat> you know, are here to stay. And um, so, you know, we, we have to flesh this out. And if it seems like we, we are a bit distracted, well, uh, I think we're being distracted in a positive way. Um, and with a, with a good partner like Benton uh, to shoulder the load and, and the responsibilities of, of, of bringing this thing forward, um, I think we're doing it responsibly. And Ultimately, I think for the benefit of uh, of all of our shareholders. So, uh, absolutely, uh, yeah. A good cesium news release on a good gold day uh, works for me every time. That's the, well. That's the you thing. also had good news on your, on your gold project. We're going to deal with the gold project last. We'll deal with the cesium news, then the lithium. Um, the headline was uh, a bit of a eye catcher there. Sokomen and Benton channel samples up to thirteen point five seven percent. CS2O and confirm high grade cesium discovery at the Golden Hope Joint Venture Southwestern Newfoundland. Now, yes. um, Tim, I'm no expert on uh, on uh, cesium, uh, but uh, I, I am pretty good at math. And you showed some numbers there of what the kilograms of cesium are worth. And uh, I can do the math on. 13 <laughs> percent that's a lot of kilograms uh there uh tim so uh let's get into this cesium news i'm really excited to talk about it and learn more yeah well there's probably very precious few people alan that that are experts uh, in, in this uh in this commodity uh i know i'm not but i am learning uh we, we did acquire uh last week a paid for report that we had uh, requested uh, from, <clears throat> I think, a, a, a reputable uh, group of, uh, of individuals that, oh, sorry, oh, forgot to turn my phone off, hang on, oh, ringing off the hook, <laughs> I got to, uh, I got to get rid of this here now, and just put it on pause, hang on, sorry, one second, I know we're cutting into our time, ah, no worries, uh, no worries, yeah, so, so where was I, um, yeah, you were, yeah, I mean, got a report, yeah, and there was a lot of positive uh, things in it. Uh, several of the bullet points you see in the press release today 
are, are drawn from that report, plus some of some information that we had already on hand. But uh, is the hardest thing to find are, are production and production and and numbers uh, like that. Uh, the market is definitely you know strongly in the hands of uh, of the Chinese and. Uh, uh, you know they're 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 very good at what they do, um, and one of those things they're very good at is not putting out a lot of information about stuff. Because I've also talked to people. You know the Tanko mine is is currently the only place that's actually producing uh, a cesium. But you know what? You can't find out how much they're producing. Uh, you can't find out the grade. Uh, don't know if that material is just not available or not available at the moment or not available ever. But, uh, and uh, I have gotten comments from people uh, who said they've tried for years to find out what kind of a, a grade and resources. Left well, I think, you know, a, a big thing is something you brought up about the Chinese. I think that the world governments, including the United States are starting to realize that you don't want the Chinese to control markets for critical metal minerals. And uh, they're even talking about putting money into Canadian mining operations to uh, get these critical uh, minerals. Um, so, uh, you know, it's uh, your, your timing is really good to be talking about something like this, uh, Tim. And I see a nice picture there of, uh, of one of the uh, Newfoundland mining mafia guys. Yeah, that's right. Uh, there you see uh, Tony Stairs, who, who is related to the to the Keatses, and uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, he and I basically took the samples that we reported today. There, there's still a batch uh, to come yet. Uh, these first few results today were 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 handpicked and rushed, and. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> again, when I opened up the email and saw all the greater than 5,000 uh, PPM cesiums, uh, a big smile came across my face because uh, you it doesn't look like it there. It looks kind of peaceful and stuff, but boy, that is a windy place. And the day before when we actually cut the samples, we were too cold to actually collect them. We just had to cut them and leave them in, the, in place and come back and chip them out the next day because we nearly froze to death. It was... 45 kilometer sustained winds. It was zero degrees and freezing rain pellets, just trying to strip every bit of life out of you <laughs> coming at us. And uh, well, we, we you couldn't turn your face to the wind at all. I mean, it would just be, it was like getting sandblasted. It was crazy. Well, if for those people that think that this mining business is easy and exploration is easy, it's uh, some pretty hard work and uh, good on you guys for getting your boots on the ground out there, Tim. Yeah, well, like I said, uh, you know, I've uh, I, I'm in this business for a reason, and that one of it is to you know uh, get rewarded at the end of the day for hard work. And I'd like to think that today we're getting a little bit of a reward for. Yeah, look at that nice oak crop there. Well, you know what? Uh, just but just look behind Tony. What do you see? You see cover. Um, we we don't know how far this thing goes. Uh, you know, uh, timing is everything, of course, and clearly, you know, the timing for the markets for these metals is good, but weather timing, probably not so good. Uh, we only found out that we had these types of grades of cesium at the in the first week of November. And uh, this was, picture was taken November 10th. Uh, I, what I should have done was take a picture, was show you a picture of what it is now. Well, the guys were out trying to soil sample and prospect around this uh, area just to see, you know, obviously look for extensions. And- um, You got about a- did I read it right that you got about a hundred meters of outcrop? Yeah, yeah, back the other direction. Um, and unfortunately, we, we just ran out of time. Uh, again, uh, there's now a meter of snow on this outcrop and everything else around it. So uh, it's possible we could get a little mile spell. We do get them from time to time. Uh, although you are up fairly high here, as you can tell, you're above the low lying plateau. But, uh, uh, you know, you're up here getting near 2,000 feet up and... Uh, you know, where it rains in the bottom, it, it, it snows at the top. So anyway, well, this is uh, uh, this is reminiscent of the, uh, you know, one of those good exploration stories that start out from seeing a nice outcropping of rock uh, that, you know, rush you rushed in there to get a, some samples from them because it uh, it got you guys excited. 
was a good thing we did go when we did because it was just days after this photo was taken that that snow came in and uh, and hasn't left. But uh, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, we have uh, you know people like to name things. So this is this is now the Hydra, the Hydra zone. And if Hydra, you're, if you're familiar with Greek mythology, um, the Hydra is a multi-headed sea beast uh, that anyway. Uh, so keeping the, the the theme going with the Kraken being obviously. A, a supersized squid or, or you know giant squid uh, we're, we're keeping that theme going so it's going to be interesting to see who wins here the hydra <laughs> or the kraken uh, yeah there you go i like the sounds of that uh, i like the sounds of a hundred meters of uh, outcrop and that keeps going undercover um that that's quite exciting well right where you see tony standing that's the southernmost uh, a bit of the outcrop and that's where that uh those three consecutive channel samples that we reported in the press release that average 8.75 i think percent to cesium uh, about a half percent lithium that's where that sample was taken and it's look <laughs> all that ground you see is ours ours uh, so you know, uh, we're in a commanding position here uh, you know obviously you know when Stephen and i staked this ground uh, you know, size, size mattered. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, we have um, over 3000 claims here and, uh, you know, we're comfortably positioned here. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we, we are, we, we are it here. If, uh, if I can say Perfect. that. So you could safely say it's a district scale project. Well, 60 kilometers from uh, tip to tip. Uh, and we've really only explored, um, uh, in detail, I mean, with the Kraken drilling, which is 12 kilometers to the south into the picture there, um, you know, probably a tenth of it. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, and it's, that's uh, that's important in itself. A tenth of it, a tenth of that size of ground, and basically you've been focused on outcropping. Yeah, <clears throat> and you can see how much outcrop is there. There's not a lot. Uh, right. It's funny, they, they call Newfoundland the rock, but that's only when you get out around the coast. The interior, except for, you know, you know some of the hills and, and areas like that, you do get some. But it's it's a very low percentage of outcrop in, in Newfoundland in, in general. Uh, so that's why, you know, the remote sort of, not remote sensing, but, but other tools like tills and soil sampling uh, have worked so well in the past in Newfoundland. And, and, and speaking of that, I mean, uh, I'm just going to show you another image I have here now. Um, stop share for a moment and go to my other maps. Where are you? Do, do, do. There it is. Can you see this yet or have I not shared it? Not shared not it yet. Sure. Should be up there any second. Usually okay. it doesn't take too long. Uh, share. Where's share screen? Where's my share screen button? It should be on the bottom of the uh, the window. Yeah, I don't want to hang things up too much here, but uh, yeah, no worries. Share screen. There we are. Tim, we're here to learn. Uh, and if it takes. Well, yeah, exactly. So, um, all right. Oh, wow. So this is now. So now we're at the Kraken area, which is about twelve kilometers uh, uh, southwest of of where this beautiful photograph is. But here's this, here's this, this is what I talked about, you, you, you use other tools. Um, <clears throat> so the Kraken Discovery Dike is, is right here. Can you see my cursor? Yep. Right in here. So this is, this area to the west is all prime oh. ground because if you look at the scaling of the soils, and this is lithium, PPM and soils, uh, we've got a booming anomaly. And, and this is two kilometers from here to here. Wow. And, and, you know, so there's strongly anomalous lithium for at least two kilometers to the southwest. And these are widely spaced lines. These are like 500 meter space lines. So uh, these are obviously much closer, but, uh, you know, we're, uh, so the drill. Oh, so the, the, the distribution of the lithium is quite impressive throughout that whole grid. Oh, it works like, it works like, like magic. So uh, we're using that now everywhere on the property. And so we're, we're, we're hammering away at getting that, that baseline of data down. But yeah. the other news release we had this week uh, was of course the, the kickstart or the restart of drilling at Kraken. And, 
And that drilling has taken place largely underneath where you see the words East Dyke here. I do have another image, but I want to stay on this one for a minute. Yeah, I see what and you're talking about. The first three holes all intersected. Beautiful uh, spot, you mean, bearing dikes up to uh, 14 meters in thickness. And uh, so this is now expanding uh, this zone and obviously clearly defines you know, anomalies in soils of say this magnitude, anything above really 50 ppm, you're probably very close to a bedrock source of, uh, of lithium. So, so we've got this trend coming down through here like this. We've got another trend coming down through here like this, which runs over to here. So, I mean, like I said, Alan, we still don't know if we're even in the best part of the system yet. Well, and, and we're getting you know, you know knowing forgetting. what I know about till sampling and uh, uh, soils from uh, the diamond exploration, it looks like you could have several trains there that uh, lead to uh, the bedrock source. Oh, I, I, oh, absolutely. Yes. And uh, let me just go to this area here. So this is the drilling announcement. So here, here's a good look at it. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at it alone. <laughs> uh, screen again. Yeah, I'm just so this is the news from Kraken. You got um, yeah. This was Kraken. earlier this week. Oh, yeah. look at that! So let me just try and get that a little larger here. Uh, wow, that's full of spotomy pigmentite. There we go. Wow, uh, <clears throat> look at that core. So, um, let's see if I can get this to work properly here. No, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there so it's, it's, you know, you get a few scattered inclusions, which, I'm, you know, obviously will be a, <clears throat> a little bit of a uh, uh, lower, obviously lower grade stuff. But yeah, so, so these are the things we're hitting uh, in, in drill core. And I like, really like the core angles. They're nice and high, which means we're cutting them pretty much true thickness. So yep. if we report 14 meters, we're probably very close the 14 meters in true thickness and then and then you scroll down and you see stuff like this yeah just juicy juicy core full of spodumene so all of this all of these nice white crystals you see here some coarser ones in looks this pretty coarse crop. too it is yeah and uh we, we we see it locally like that but I'm, I'm not sure if it means anything in terms of uh, zonation or, or whatever but uh you know they are bigger crystals so Will it balance out that bigger crystals will give you the same grade as you know two smaller ones? We'll we'll have to find out. But uh, yeah. Anyway, so this this core is now being cut and and prioritized for uh, <clears throat> for assay. We you definitely have some serious mineralization there, and um, you know it's like exploring for anything, Tim, in a hard rock setting. You you got to figure out the the system. You guys are just tapping in and uh starting to get some some picture of what it looks like uh and uh but those big uh surface anomalies chem anomalies look uh quite exciting for the potential to find multiple occurrences so i'm still sharing screen here right yep okay so uh the drilling that that concluded uh, earlier this summer uh, basically focused in the East Dyke area and off to the north uh, to the northeast. Uh, the, the the start up the restart of drilling <clears throat> that we announced earlier this week and the first three holes are all drilled uh, about 200 meters southeast of of the East Dyke trench area where our our biggest intersection we we report I think 0.6 something of uh, over 20 meters including. I think about six meters of 1.2 or 1.12 percent Li2O, and it looks like to me this is the trend of the trench. So to me, it looks like it kind of lines up. So that's what I was going to say. Is it uh, yeah. one big system that goes under cover there? Yeah, and, and we don't understand fully yet why it's kind of uh, on this angle, but we do know, the, uh, Alan, that the area is is folded. So <clears throat> perhaps what we're seeing is just something like a sigmoidal sort of shape coming along like this. And uh, uh, time will tell, obviously a lot more drilling to do. So we finished, we finished testing. This was a new discovery we announced in a, in a press release uh, uh, a couple of months back. Uh, so here we are with the names again and, and, uh, and the K, the Killick zone. And yeah. for those familiar with what a Killick is, a Killick is a, is a, is a homemade anchor. 
that uh, fishermen used to make uh, uh, years ago um, because they didn't or couldn't afford to buy or, or iron anchors were, were hard to come by. So basically it's made of uh, very flexible uh, sticks and it's just yep. the shape of a pinker and, and they wrap around a series of rocks. And anyway, so that's the Killick zone. So now we're kind of sticking with in addition thing. to your outcrop, and your geochem, yep. it looks like there's some interesting structural story there as well. Well, it is, and uh, yeah, if we had if we had all the time in the world, we could certainly look at. Uh, there's also a very interesting circular feature here that I don't I don't know if it shows up on the other um, on this map or not. But yeah, um, let me just uh, stop share and go to this one again. Uh, am I sharing this now? Can you see the soil map again? No, not yet. Okay. Like I said, first day with my new hands. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now share. Here we, there go. we go. We start there. Okay. Yeah. Look what sticks oh. out at you. Look at this thing. Look at this feature yeah. here. These are these are streams. I've never seen streams go around in a circle before. <laughs> so what this is, we we think now because we have seen traces of it in some of the drilling, is that there's a there's a mafic intrusion under here, and uh -huh. uh, that's very significant because underneath the Tanko mine in Manitoba is a mafic intrusion, a okay. gabbro, and that's what this seems to be here to me is. And the fact that you've got this mineralization on and centered around this intrusion, um, I think is very important to a feature. Uh, it's, its actual link to the mineralization remains to be seen, but it, it could help with upgrading. It could help remobilization. Looks like you've got a right in the middle there, a, a north-south structure as well. Uh, Ripping right up, right up here, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. And then it has a big curve in it. There's, there's, there's structure, and, and by the way, uh, we, 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 we talk in the past, and we haven't probably mentioned it lately, but uh, the Bay Dest Fault is the, is the fault zone that the Hope Brook Gold Mine sits on, which is about uh, 15 kilometers to the, south, uh, to the southwest of us here, basically to the left. So uh -huh. this is the trace of the Bay Dest Fault. So this huh. is a major gold-bearing structure. Don't forget, we staked these claims initially for, for gold. gold. Um, so we're still looking for gold, uh, but right now, clearly, you know, we have a little job to do, and that's see what this lithium cesium figure out the lithium and the cesium. Wow, here and, that's you know, our, our prospectors are still out there. You know, well, not today, but because uh, of the snow, but uh, our prospectors are are still looking for anything and everything of interest. So if we if we see rocks that look like they're you know, potentially gold bearing. We're obviously, we want to sample them, but uh, well, yeah, so, so we you've got structure. some pretty good uh, eyeballs out there. The Stairs family um, is a, I called it earlier, the Stairs and the Keats are the kind of the Newfoundland mining uh, uh, mafia, and uh, they know what to look for. And uh, uh, you got some good eyeballs out there, and obviously they're seeing some good stuff with those outcrops, and uh, and you, now you guys are getting in there with the truth machine. It's uh, exciting times for that that project with the cesium and the lithium. Yep. <clears throat> but then also recently, Tim, I've been saying that you're kind of at a seminal moment for the Moosehead project. Um, uh, why yeah, I now, say can that? I, can I just tidy up here with uh, with this lithium? Yeah. For just another minute. Yeah. yeah. So basically, uh, the drilling <clears throat> that's going on right now uh, was to test that new discovery, the Killick the Killick zone, uh, which is uh, just to the southwest, about 200 meters uh, southwest of the East Dyke. Uh, now the drill has moved over to uh, just west of the discovery, the original discovery area, uh -huh. and this is where it's going to basically spend the rest of its time prior to Christmas, which is only a few weeks away, uh, drilling as many holes as we can get into these uh, geochem. And uh, I'm pretty confident that uh, we'll, we'll get some, uh, some, some, some dikes in, in that work as well, Alan. So Yeah, well, that's your, probably if you, your most significant train of, uh, of hits. Yeah, 
Yeah. So, uh, and uh, as well, I mean, if we can get more done, obviously at the cesium, we will. Uh, clearly, there's more results to come. Uh, we've got some uh, a, ba a box of samples shipped out to Vancouver. Vancouver Petrographics are are going to give us the detailed mineralogy of these things because. Uh, uh, you know, it's not like copper or, you know, which oxidizes green and you can see patches of green over here and, you know, you, you know where to go. Uh, it's, it's a little more problematic with, with some of these silicate minerals and things that look the same as everything else. I know pellucite is supposed to look like quartz and I see a lot of quartz <laughs> looking stuff in, in these rocks, but you know that not all of it is that. So, uh, so, there, so, so we will be working at this, you know, as, as, as best we can and obviously digging into the research and the literature uh, and making connections. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's companies out there that are, that are interested in this. And uh, uh, one that came, uh, I just happened to be Googling around looking for cesium information. And I found some information on this company called Lepidico. L-E-P-I-D-I-C-O. They're a Canadian Australian uh, firm and they have a deposit in, <clears throat> in South, uh, not Southern Africa, it's either uh, Namibia or Zimbabwe, I forget. But uh, uh, you know, they, they have a resource there of 6.7 million tons of uh, almost exactly uh, uh, the same numbers that we put out <laughs> um, previous press release. Uh, and uh, you know they have a 150 million dollar market cap. Wow! Um, and the numbers are very similar. And 6.7 million tons is not a large deposit. So, uh, but what intrigued me about it is that they have their own technology. You know, a lot of people complain that well the Chinese have all the technology. Well, not so much so. Um, lapidolite is the mineral that that they're chasing for the for the lithium, and uh, it appears that uh, lapidolite may be what we have at uh, at the uh, at the hydra, the cesium bank. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I want to forge partnerships and relationships with companies that um, have similar rocks and, and have similar desires that we do, and that's to you know supply the world with these metals. Wow, so, uh, that's, yeah, so uh, that's exciting stuff. And I'm, we'll uh, away at, I'm kind of a point. science junkie, Tim, and because uh, of the my experience with diamonds, you know, we were you know, on the fly kind of inventing diamond exploration in Canada. Uh, so we had to apply a lot of science to it and um, uh, sort of innovative ways of doing things. And uh, so, uh, you know, I think the, the, the metals industry needs more of that. And, uh, um, you know, we definitely need to get some production of these things outside of China. So, uh, good on you guys. It sounds like a hell of a start with the cesium, uh, and you're moving along with the uh, with the lithium. But uh, my favorite subject is that jewelry box hits you had uh, of gold recently or a few months ago. Um, I keep telling everybody I think this is a seminal moment in the exploration of an orogenic gold system. Um, and you guys have done some additional work there and are about to uh, start drilling around there, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah apparently. Uh, well, I got a text uh, just, just a short while ago from my uh, uh, technician, and he said that the, uh, the drill is on the, on the collar, and right now they're just lining it up. And, uh, uh, yeah, we should have casing sunk by, hopefully, by, uh, by early evening and uh, get a night shift in and uh, we'll wait a couple of days and see what happens. Uh. <laughs> well, when we talked last, when we talked about the, those results, I remember you talking about how you guys wanted to throw some good research into this to make sure you were going in the right direction. I believe you did some geophysics, but the other thing that really intrigued me was your structural geologist getting a chance to look at the televiewer data and help to understand where to drill. Um, exactly, can, yeah. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that, Tim? Yeah, well, well, Dr. Collar was here <clears throat> for five days with us uh, earlier this month. He's, uh, he's, he's back home now, uh, busily uh, finishing off his report, although we do we pretty much touch base with him on a daily basis. So, uh, but he did leave, when he left, he did, he did have some pretty firm thoughts on, uh, on what he thinks is going on. And essentially, this is it. This is the East Trend. 
this is what he thinks 463 is doing. Something like that, a complete conjugate or a complete oblique uh, perpendicular sort of feature to the main Eastern trend. So uh, we've been basically drilling the Eastern trend like this because you know that's yeah. how you should drill it, right? You right. Get your thickness. Right. Now, this thing like that, um, we need to come back at it and basically drill through down it. dip from the main structure. But because this is an internal feature in a braided network or you know a feathering of, of structures, uh, we, we've got a situation whereby now we need to drill this way to hit this the right way. So right, uh, and and it's it's really below anything else. In fact, uh, a section we did show in in, in a press release uh, on that uh, about a month or so ago was that the um, <clears throat> a couple of holes <laughs> from 2018. Uh, were shut down within 50 meters of this zone because, well, we didn't have the information, right? Uh, and you didn't see any alteration? Well, I guess you're too far no, away no, from it. No, uh, what it is, there, there, there is alteration, but, uh, and that's another thing that, that really doesn't get talked about enough, uh, and, and perhaps I should bring it out more, more, uh, more often, is there's a huge volume of rock here that's been soaked through with iron carbonate. Uh, I, I've, I've never seen anything quite like it. Uh, normally you get a vein come through and you can see a bit of wall rock alteration, you know, for a meter or a couple of meters. A couple of meters. We're talking two kilometers thick, wide Whoa. across, that's just soaked with iron carbonate. In fact, if we drilled all of our drill holes and, and left them outside for four or five months, uh, everything will be brown when we, when we come back because they're just soaked. So to me, that that's that's important, and and, and probably a, a point I should be making more often that Moosehead is in a huge system. It's been in a huge plumbing system, and and that's crucial for big gold deposits. I mean, if absolutely. You're, if you're, you know, if you're struggling to, to get a spit going, you know, to, to move these fluids around, you're going to get what you got, which is very localized sort of sort of features. But and I think that's why we, we're seeing so many subparallel zones at Moosehead is because they're all within that big carbonate envelope, that big plumbing system, right? So yeah, uh, uh, it's it's, uh, it, it's yeah. I should be making more fuss about it, but uh, uh, but obviously people just wanted to talk about gold. well for and for investors that aren't the geological types, you know that's important to pay attention to because these the mineralizing system alters the rocks around it chemically. And if yeah. you have a big alteration zone, it's often a sign that you have a big plumbing system somewhere there. Yeah. Um, and uh, when you were doing your, so that alteration halo is is very important as it suggests a very big and powerful mineralizing system. Yeah, and getting back to your, your comment about, uh, you know, uh, or, or I guess where I started to talk about holes drilled in 2018 stopped short and you know did we see any alteration no uh if we had left the core outside well we know we're in this big envelope of carbonate but uh but we've seen veins uh, and this is another thing that that dr collar started to sort of point to us and said don't forget this or that uh within less than half a meter of of, of a significant mineralized vein the rocks look completely normal and then bang, there's your vein. Like it, it can happen that quick. It can happen within a, obviously a more structurally prepared zone, but we also see veining in rocks. Like I said, normal bedding, normal bedding, normal bedding, and then bang, there's your little bit of shearing and then you've got your uh, your vein. So you, know, you, you, you could be half a meter away, shut a hole down and not even realize how close you are to, uh, to, to, uh, to a zone. So, uh, but anyway, thankfully we have oh. history. You got a heck of a jewelry box there to chase after now, Tim. And when you were explaining it there, um, that's reminiscent of the Fosterville Swan Zone, complex uh, uh, faulting and uh, complex uh, um, uh, vein veining. Yep. Oh yeah. Same thing. I mean, these rocks are crinkling and folding. They're, they're not. They're not behaving uniformly. I mean, they they slip and they slide and. You know, things are just getting repositions and jostled. There's breaches developed in places. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're in a, this is an orogenic gold system, not an epithermal one. <clears throat> right. 
epithermal, your more uniform uh, yeah. veining. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now they still can get deformed later, but I mean they, they're generally not formed in an active, you know, uh, like a, a shear zone like that. I mean they're they're more and, and different on the side angles. of a volcano. Yeah, and they're on the side of a volcano. I mean, uh, you know, having said that, uh, we, we we have had a couple of earthquakes, minor earthquakes in central Newfoundland in the past little while, uh, not not big ones, but anyway, maybe maybe the earth is moving again. Who knows? Ah, well, it's. Uh... It's definitely moving nicely down at that jewelry box hits you guys have made. I, I, I've had a smile on my face thinking about that and talking about that jewelry box. And now you guys are drilling into it. You're going after it, Tim. Yeah, and we've also uh, we also changed the head on the drill, so uh, we're we're drilling it now with HQ core. So it's going to look even better if we get it. <laughs> right, thicker, more more. Uh, Bigger That's diameter core, core, you know, more accurate for, uh, well, you get a better chance to, in a nuggety system, a better chance to, to capture gold as well. You get a more representative sample, et cetera. Plus, man, it feels nice in the hands. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tim, um, did, did I get it right that you guys were doing some geophysics around there as well? Yeah, we, uh, uh, there, well, there's geophysics been done on and off on Moosehead for over 20 years with previous operators and met with very limited success. Uh, what, we're, what we're doing now, and they should be starting this week, is a, uh, <clears throat> it's called an alpha IP. And it's a very robust IP system that sees down much deeper than, uh, than a regular IP. Uh, in fact, the selling point for me was, it, it'll see down one third uh, of the line length. So if we do, a 1.2 kilometer long line, we You'll can see now 400. see detailed IP down to 400 meters. Yeah. And normally IP is not reliable or, or even very, very useful below those sorts of depths. So yeah. uh, we decided to give them a try to see, and we focus on an area uh, of, of you know, very importance to us. And that's the area at the Southern end of the Eastern trend where the 75 zone comes through and we're set and, and then the South Pond zone is coming in. So there's a lot going on. And they claim, um, and I don't know if it's on their website or not, but uh, for a local explorer here, I, I won't name it in case uh, it, it isn't something they want out or the other company wants out, but uh, they, they could model a two meter wide vein with IP. Come on. Are you two serious? Meter wide vein. That's, that's what they said. And they Because most of the and, time when you're using IP, you're just trying to pick up structures to lead you towards the vein. Yeah, so I'm going to give them a chance to see if we can see anything. It's you know it's going to cost us probably 150 grand to do this, but if it works and we can you know model these veins and see disruptions in them and, and where suddenly it's you know an east trend and now suddenly it's like this. I mean, if we can model things like that, my God, we we we'd be we wouldn't miss, would we? And it would save you a lot of money. You'd uh, you'd be banging them off left, right, and center. Well, you know, <clears throat> there's some pretty interesting stuff happening with filtering of geophysical data that uh, using these big algorithms. Um, I'm following a company very closely called Nine Mile Metals uh, in um, in uh, near Bathurst, and uh, they've been they have this, uh, they're using an algorithm to, to filter out the data and they're two for two in hitting massive sulfides uh, all, nice. and 20 kilometers apart. They nice. showed me the raw data the, from the government and it was really noisy, but then they used their filtering and it, it pinpointed exactly where to drill and they hit massive sulfides off of it. So there's some cool stuff happening in geophysics and using that big data to filter out noise. Yeah, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, Dr. Collar, uh, you know, obviously he's, he's very much in demand and uh, he was telling us about uh, a very recent success he's had with geophysics, uh, seismic actually, uh, over in the Irish Midlands. Uh, they just added uh, several more years to the life of, uh, of the Terra uh, uh, lead zinc mine over there. They found a 30 million ton uh, uh, lens. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, uh, large, largely through Dr. Collar's work. So uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, he's a man you want to have on your side for sure. And uh, 
again, we're very glad that he was able to come back and revisit us. Uh, he says he missed us. I don't blame him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we treat him good when he's over here. So uh, anyway. Uh, and well, in an orogenic gold system, it's all about structure and uh, having a guy like that to be able to also look down the hole and see what, what you're in coming across is uh is pretty exciting stuff yeah well it's amazing what you can learn from you know a, a three inch drill hole but uh <clears throat> once you get beyond that <clears throat> that screen um mother nature can come back in again and uh, and do some uh, and do some dastardly things and <laughs> mess things up for you so uh we'll see i mean uh, like i said we should we should have core in the box certainly by tomorrow on the first hole testing the 463 I'm just going to call it the 463 zone. I think people know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> I just keep yeah. calling it a jewelry box. So about three days time, you know, give or take, no breakdowns or anything like that. Uh, uh, we, sh we should be getting very close to something hopefully very special. Well, I hope, uh, I think it's there, Tim. I, uh, I, you know, I watch a lot of these orogenic systems and, I think you guys are at a seminal moment for that uh, that that Moosehead project, and uh, I'm looking forward to our next interview about Moosehead. And I can't wait to give it. Hopefully, <laughs> if, you can't, if you can't reach me, you know what happens, right? No, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send I'll send him I'll send a troop out there to find you. No, no, I'll uh, I'll I'll face the, I'll face the truth. I mean, yeah. No, oh, no, I, 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 uh, I love now, I'm caution, watching. Caution, cautionary note. Uh, Dave did say that it could also have a slightly oblique to the other side as well. So we may actually have to drill two holes before we officially say it's, you know, it's, it's a rod or it's some other weird shape and back to the drawing board. But uh, I'm going to give it a couple of holes. I, I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm hoping for the first hole to hit, but uh, um, it won't be totally devastating if we don't get it in the first hole. Sometimes you got to poke around a little bit. Yep. Well, that's what the nature of these orogenic gold systems are all about, Tim. And uh, I think you're on to something pretty spectacular at the jewelry box or 463 or whatever people want to call it. And uh, I got my fingers and toes crossed. And uh, I think you got something there special, Tim. So keep well, at thanks, her. Thanks, Alan. Yeah. Well, I agree. I mean, I, I like this project. And again, I'll say we are a gold company and we will remain a gold company. And Moosehead is still our flagship property. Um, but, you know, the value of our other projects shouldn't be uh, uh, left aside either. So it's our it's our duty to uh, to flesh these things out. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, time will tell what value, if any, Kraken will bring. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure there will be something for us down the road. Cool. Let me close it off, Tim, and we can have a chat at the other end. Okay. Thank you. Well, there you go, folks. Um, Newfoundland-focused explorers. Tim lives near the Moosehead Project. He's got the uh, Stairs family as a partner. Um, uh, they're very well known in the mining sector, um, part of the Newfoundland mining mafia. These guys are experts at uh, prospecting. And, um, well, they've got something really spectacular, I think, at Moosehead for gold. Now lithium and cesium are coming into the scene. Um, and collectively, you know, the, the company's valuation, uh, it's up today, 15%, uh, but it still only has a $64 million valuation. And getting back to that orogenic gold system story, you know, when um, when uh, Fosterville, when Kirkland Lake started mining at Fosterville in the Swan Zone, uh, it was a company maker for an already big company. And the reason it was is it made them such a low cost producer and highly profitable operation. That's the nature of these orogenic gold systems. And I keep saying that I think they're on a seminal moment where they've now found what looks like a jewelry box hit. And that's when things get really exciting on these orogenic gold systems. And um, I, uh, 
you know, if it could make a, a, a billion plus company uh, stock go crazy and ultimately be bought out at a huge profit for shareholders, um, you know, a $64 million company, uh, it certainly can be a company maker. And uh, I, I think they're at an exciting time for Moosehead. And now the lithium and the cesium come on the scene. So uh, this company's doing a lot of great work. Tim and his team have done a lot of great work, keep doing a lot of great work. These are your boots on the ground kind of guys. And uh, they're my kind of explorers. And I like what they're finding with their boots on the ground and the truth machine. And I expect to see more good news to talk with Tim about soon. So on that note, do your homework, speak with your financial advisors before making any investment decisions and do your homework is the big thing. Go to their website, look at their corporate presentations, look at their news release. It'll give you an idea of what they're working on. And of course, my YouTube channel, Rocks and Stocks News, been very fortunate to have Tim on multiple interviews. And uh, we always have a good conversation about what's going on with the news when it's made. Um, and uh, so on that note, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.